All right, welcome back. You're watching the big board. We're looking at Armored Knights, the Guderian crosses the Desna 1941. Armored Knights is a system or series of uh, battles that cover a wide range of topics, but primarily for this particular uh, module, it is uh, situated in the Eastern Front, whereas the rest of the modules are really focused on uh, Africa and, uh, uh, and battles in that area. So <clears throat> this is supposed to be a learning game for you. You know, you, you buy this and see if you like the system and kind of go for it from there. So, so what I thought I'd do, uh, because I'm in two minds here about, about this game, I, what I thought I would do is quick little rundown on the, the gameplay and then, uh, you know, how things evolved, what I could have done differently or better. Uh, I, I don't think there's any need to get into the component uh, aspects of the game I've already discussed those I I think they're okay and uh, I'll leave it at that uh, and I'm saying okay for the money um, we played 10 turns so we got to midday on the 26th of August and the idea here is that this bridge here needs to be taken very early in the game and then you build a bridgehead here and then hold and then you uh, then look to penetrate down this road and there's an exit hex just to my right here or right right down here right and next turn three uh, battalions of tanks arrive there nothing to be uh, worried about there at all really but in this type of terrain swampy terrain it really means we can only bring two battalions uh, supported by artillery and uh, things like AA guns at a time down here to fight these guys. So we kind of missed, we, we missed the window more through poor uh, <coughs> planning and gameplay than anything else. So let's get into that a little bit. Novgorod Severski here is the town that you're supposed to capture quickly and then move on and take this bridge. And this is the only bridge that matters in the game. Uh, all the rest of the units that are down here for the Russians uh, you can ignore them, or you can uh, hope that they'll move up and try and protect the bridge, which is what my Russians did. And then we came down this higher speed road and across, and we laid bridges here. But we'll get to that in a sec. So when I say we, I'm talking about the Germans. So the Germans' initial attacks were here in this area, pretty effective. We were a little bit clumsy with our attacks, didn't really understand the system terribly well yet. As we became more comfortable with them, uh, they became more efficient and more effective and more deadly, subject to a D10 spread on the die rolls, which as you can see right there, 3-8, right? Uh, so you're gonna get some, some wide spreads, but you're also gonna get some clustered results too. We had a lot of 1-2 uh, results, 2-1 two, results. Both sides have to take losses in this game and both sides get to roll for losses in this game. And you use the same set of DRMs, but you move them uh, relative to your uh, position in the as defender or attacker. So I've done a blog post on how combat works or how I think combat works. And you're welcome to go read that. I'm not going to go into that here either. Uh, the combat <coughs> is probably the meatiest part of the game. It is the part that you will spend the most time on. Every combat will take you uh, between one and five minutes, depending on how quickly you can do fractions and, uh, and decimals and add them together and not lose track of them. And then uh, if you have regimental integrity, to multiply it all by 1.5 and add your mother's, sister's, farmer's, daughter's, goats and subtract the donkeys and you'll have a number. And then you'll look at the, uh, uh, at the results table and wonder, wow, that was interesting. <laughs> it, it gets a little... It's a great way to bring all the discrete elements, the combat elements, into a game. So unlike SCS, where a factor is a factor is a factor, here this game is really trying to show you how there can be some variability in the combat value and also remove the factor counting exercise for both sides to uh, bring that, those, that, bring that, uh, that variability into the, each in, individual battle. There's a cost for that, and the cost is time. And that's okay. In fact, it's actually fine the more I think about it. I, I don't mind there being a cost for that because it gives it some flavor without jumping into Goss land, right? Into the decision games, 
three column one pa- of uh, three columns of rules, uh, page format, and DRMs out your backside, and tables and things, and just hard. <laughs> this is, I think, to me, this is this game most closely equates to the simple combat system or standard combat system, I should say, uh, from um, from the game is now Multi Man Publishing, and. With that in mind, uh, the thing it does better is combat. And, and the conflict resolution here is significantly better. The game does put you in the role of a divisional commander, absolutely. And you're, you know that you have all these assets. You have uh, OBs to uh, help you understand who belongs where. I'm just going to pull one of those out for you so you can see it. It's in the box. So we've got third panzer, fourth panzer here on the left hand side, and we've got the third, three hundred and seventh rifle division here. Uh, you've got these various elements and their capabilities, and they all matter to a degree, one degree or another, and that's cool. There's a couple of other scenarios in the game. It's not just a campaign game. So you're in the role of the divisional commander. You're making all those choices. Command uh, in this game really doesn't matter that much. You can kind of get around, around and away with most of it. The biggest issue with command is making sure that you have the right units using the right artillery, which a couple of times I've gone to use artillery then realized that I had the wrong guy in range, right? Uh, but given the ranges and the scale of the game and the, the space we're playing on, it's going to be very rare that an HQ will be out of range at eight hexes or that these guys, that's actually a, a nine in there. Uh, you know, that's just, so this is, you know, what we talk about components, right? That's just kind of not good. That looks like a red dot to me. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, you, you, you're not, so command's not going to be an issue. Supply is not going to be an issue. <clears throat> there is no supply in this game. And, uh, your 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 all the work you we are going to do is going to be in combat. Uh, there are overruns in this game, and they do work interestingly. I I struggled with them a little bit because you can move units up and adjacent, and they participate in the overrun. But I don't know if they pay the extra points for the overrun, and then the final unit you move up to do the overrun and pay the two movement points for they do the overrun. So it was a little, that was one of the few parts of the rules where I was a little lost, uh, despite the clear wording. And that just might be me being slow. So let's not, let's not pace the game for that. Um, so in terms of the battle here, the third panzer pushed really easily through the Soviets. I didn't have a lot of trouble, uh, knocking the guys, uh, out of the way and that may have been a sub uh, uh, subject to my inability to set up a decent defense so let's not say that they're uber panzers just yet let's just say that i played them a lot i played the germans a lot better than i did the soviets and the soviets did quickly collapse back on the bridge and made me fight for access here and then access on this side but once you're on this bridge you can uh, very quickly start beating on these elements here that, that I had hedgehogged. Uh, one interesting thing here, you, uh, where is it here? These hexes, while you can't cross a major river, I'm unclear whether you can move along sort of like the, the shoreline of a major river because retreating, if I could retreat to here, from here to here, say, that would be a lot better than having to go up under the bridge and we'll put a zone of control on that bridge and slow down, slow down the enemy. So I wasn't clear about that. That's a question I didn't ask. I didn't get it clarified, so I don't know the answer. I just assumed you couldn't use those hexes. It made it a little bit more challenging and a lot slower for the Germans, so maybe that was a mistake. So from a tactical standpoint, I think one of the things that we did wrong was we should have pushed south quickly with a... Uh, a, a regiment of forces, maybe taken uh, this force here, the 33rd or the 3rd, or it is, 3rd Panzer Group. Sorry, I can't read that sideways. 
No, it's not the 33rd. Okay. I had it. No, that's the 33rd. So these guys, should have taken these guys and moved them down here, knocked out the couple of units that were the, down in this area. There was one uh, uh, regiment and a few supporting units or, or cut them off and then laid this bridge quickly here. Instead of doing it two or three turns ago, I should have done it four or four turns ago or five turns ago. What this would then do <clears throat> is force some of the Soviets to come down here on the right hand side on the other side of the Desna River, come down here and defend this area here so that when I brought the fourth panzer on and I could rocket boy one of the engineering units, this guy, I think there's actually an eight rated eight factor unit as well somewhere, maybe, I'm not sure. But with seven movement points, this guy can uh, boogie down here, particularly if this area is all cleared out, it's a lot faster, but otherwise you go around and then lay this bridge, and then next thing you know, Bob's your uncle, you're across. So in terms of victory conditions, we we got a, almost got a full division across the river. Uh, we certainly have a full regiment across the river, and we would need to have control of this hex down here within, you know, ideally, I, I still have uh, a bunch of turns. I've got... Uh, 15 turns or left or thereabouts to to really beat on these three units there are other reinforcements coming though in two four six turns and they enter here so that might be a little bit of, of a push to try and capture that hex but we would have achieved our uh, minor victory condition i think it's called Victory, the victory conditions are in this really super small font on this chart that is kind of Cutting it fine on the uh, on the edging here. There's no there's very little edge space. But so it would have been, I guess, a decisive victory. German player was able to concentrate all the remaining elements of the third Panzer division on the east bank of the Desna with the bridge intact. So yeah, we could absolutely do that. I see no challenges whatsoever in, in achieving that. So we definitely would have got that. Uh, we may have got a decisive if we could get down into this uh, down to this corner down here and, and occupy the hex or push units uh, off the board. You know, I would say if you could push units off the board, then these guys can't come on the board. Perhaps I don't know. Any, anyway, uh, that's the uh, that's the that's the game. It's it's quite thematic. It does generate some nice narrative. I made quite a few notes. I may write it up. I, I don't know. Um, I it, I felt like I was against the clock the entire time based on the victory conditions. There is one strategic uh, condition here, I think, that says something like if you capture something within three turns, then you get a strategic victory. I'm just looking here. I can't see it now. Anyway, maybe I, maybe I misread that. Uh, so, narrative... Theme is good. Mechanically, it's good. OB, I think, is good. Who knows? Uh, you would have to go pull out all the books, right? Uh, we can trust that uh, Chris does great research, given his uh, enthusiasm for his uh, other systems that are massive monster games at the company level. So we can pretty much trust that this is going to be okay there. I've mentioned the components. I think the components are okay. I think the game the game system is light and fast playing. I'm going to reserve judgment on whether I actually really like it until I play with my buddy opposed. Uh, Pete and I are going to do that, and we'll see how that plays out. And with that additional uh, data point, we can then perhaps have a more informed opinion. I will say that I don't think there's a whole lot for the Soviets to do other than turtle up and uh, and take a beating. I, I don't see you conducting any sort of significant counterattacks unless the Germans leave themselves exposed with uh, you know weaker weaker edge units. Uh, the the combat losses there are a handful of steps lost here. There are three or four three or four minor units. Uh, company scale units destroyed you can see the Soviet losses there it's pretty significant um, 
There are a couple of a couple of replacement rules and, and sort of straggler recovery rules that I don't nece- necessarily agree with. It does suggest that you can recover an entire battalion of forces if that's the the mix of units that are in the daily losses for the Red Army, and uh, that just goes gets gets slapped slapped down next to your HQ even if it's surrounded. So. I didn't play that that way. I call bullshit on that. If you're that isolated in that in this scale, you know, trapped in this village or, or minor city, whatever it is, I'm not giving you a battalion to start over with on the next turn. So that uh, may also have aided the Germans' uh, assault. I, I did bring the unit back in on over here. So bygones, uh, they got the unit, but just not where, not right the slap bang in the middle of the road because I hadn't killed the HQ yet. Which I could have, I just chose not to attack it because I assumed it was an irrelevant piece for the time being. All right, so that's my uh, quick take on this game. I, I'm I, uh, I'm not showering it with praise, nor am I uh, slagging on it. Uh, it's kind of stuck in the middle there. Uh, it, there's a price value thing here that needs to be assessed, given the you know I think it's a sixty dollar retail value, and I think that the while there are a number of scenarios in here, I'm not sure you're getting more than a couple of plays out of this bad boy unless I am uh, severely mistaken and, and missing a few things here, uh, which is, you know, that could happen. I'll let you get a closer look at the units there. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Hope you enjoyed a quick look at Armored Knights, uh, the Gadera. I could call it AK Desna, but here's what the box looks like. You can see that there. And if you have any interest in it, I encourage you to get out onto the Grognard Simulations website. Check it out. Talk to you soon.